Okay, YouTube, so in this video, I wanted to discuss a business's ability to deduct 100% of the purchase of a vehicle that's gonna be used for their business. Now, the reason why I wanna create this video is I see a ton of videos out there and advice, particularly on Instagram and TikTok, and they make these outlandish claims about how you can basically buy any car you want, write the whole thing off, uh, and it's just horrible, horrible tax advice. It's so incomplete, it's so misleading. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna actually go through the rules, talk about what you really need to be worried about, what are the exceptions, and then we're also gonna look at an example tax return where we um, record the actual vehicle purchase and what is deductible. So I've got a slide in front of us here, and then I've got a tax return up here. Uh, this is gonna be for an S-Corp, but the principles for the most part apply, whether it's an S-Corp, uh, a C-Corp, a partnership, or even a, a sole proprietorship. So let's start, uh, we'll work our way from the top, go down to the bottom, and I have some examples which we're going to go through the fact pattern and then look at the tax return itself. So here's the false claim that I see all the time. Simply buy a vehicle for your business. If it's over 6,000 pounds in weight, you can deduct 100% of the purchase price in that first year, right? So the 100% deduction is that bonus depreciation deduction. And the 6,000 pound element, um, and we'll get into the rules later, so they're targeting you know, large SUVs or trucks uh, that you could use for your business to travel around, but they also kind of, you, you can use them for personal reasons, right? You can get a large SUV, um, that you might use um, you know, to just commute or use for personal reasons on the weekend. So here's the relevant tax code sections that we need to be aware of. So first one, uh, section 168K, uh, specifically 6A, provides a 100% depreciation deduction for property that's put into service after September 27, 2017 and before Jan uh, January 1, 2023. Now that range is relevant because uh, the tax reform passed in 2017 set that start date. And then this is when the 100% depreciation deduction expires. So after January 1, 2023, you can still take uh, a, a bonus depreciation deduction, but it's not gonna be 100%. It's gonna start to slowly phase out. Um, okay, so the second code section here that's relevant, 280 cap F, A1A imposes dollar limitations on passenger automobiles. Now, if you have a passenger automobile, you can still take a bonus depreciation deduction of 100%, but it's not gonna be, it, it might be capped at a certain limit. So passenger automobiles are subject to certain caps, whereas non-passenger automobiles are not. And so this is the, dis this is the, the uh, point that they try to hammer home with the 6,000 uh, pound test. So in 280 Cap F D5, passenger automobiles are four-wheeled vehicles that are, that are driving, dr driven around on the road, right? So it's not like a tractor in a farm. You have a four-wheeled vehicle that's driven on the road, and it's 6,000 pounds or less in unloaded gross vehicle weight. That's the key. So when you see these videos and they say you got to buy a vehicle over 6,000 pounds in weight, this is why, because in order to escape this dollar limitation on passenger autos, you've got to buy a vehicle big enough that weighs more than 6,000 pounds to get out of those uh, cap limitations. Okay, so that's what we're getting at here. Now, let's look at uh, the rule itself in a little more detail. In order to claim the bonus depreciation for the vehicle after you buy it, the following has got to apply here, right? So you purchase a vehicle in the business name. Okay, very, very important. If you've got a business, don't buy it in your personal name and then just kind of pretend that it was purchased under the entity name. It does not work like that. You've got to go to the company uh, or the dealer, whoever you're buying the vehicle from, get it titled in the business name. If you've got to borrow money on it, get the note in the business name. Very, very important. So you buy a vehicle in the business name and then the GVWR, uh, the gross vehicle weight rating, has got to be over 6,000 pounds. So most people that uh, are searching for this excess 6,000 pound limit are looking at SUVs or trucks. Um, and of course, they're vehicles that, 
you know, they're passenger automobiles for all intents and purposes, right? I mean, people are just buying these vehicles. Uh, they're not necessarily lugging, you know, supplies or anything like that. They're driving around. But the idea is if you get an SUV or truck, it's going to weigh more. So you can, you can exceed the 6,000 pound limit. Uh, the second piece here is the vehicle has got to be purchased um, anytime during the tax year, right? That's key. So you can only write it off in the year that you actually bought it. And in order to qualify for the bonus depreciation deduction, the vehicle must be used at least 50% for business purposes. Now, the way you measure that, business versus personal use is measured by the number of miles driven during the year. So you're looking at a prorated amount. Okay, very, very important. And this piece here is the most, le most misleading section I see on all these viral TikTok or Instagram videos is they leave this part out, right? It's gotta be used at least 50% for, for business. And even if it's used at least 50% for business, but less than 100, you've gotta prorate the deduction. In other words, if you buy a vehicle and you use it 90% for business, 10% for personal, you need to reduce the amount of the deduction by 10%. That's the personal portion. You cannot write off 100% of it. And this is where I see a lot of people get trapped is they buy a vehicle for business, what they claim business purposes. They write off the whole thing, but they can't support it, right? They're using it for business purposes, but they also take the, whole, the vehicle home at night. They use it to commute. They use it to drive their kids to soccer practice on the weekends. If you have any kind of personal component, you must reduce the amount of the deduction by the personal component. The IRS is not going to believe that you use it 100% for business purposes. It just won't. And so what we'll do here is we'll look at two examples and then we'll look at the tax forms and see how all this information is transferred over. So I'm going to read both examples and then we'll go to the tax return and then we'll flip back and forth as, as needed. So example one, this is when you have bonus depreciation eligible for the uh, vehicle. So we have our S Corp here, Fake Consulting Business LLC. It purchases a 2020 Toyota 4Runner, okay? So big vehicle, it exceeds that 6,000 pound uh, threshold. They bought it for $62,000 in cash on June 30, 2020. The vehicle is being used by John, who owns 50% of the company. So John's a 50% shareholder in the S-Corp. Now, during the 2020 tax year, the odometer shows that the vehicle was driven 11,800 miles. And according to John's mileage books, really important to keep these, uh, he notes that he drove the vehicle 2,700 miles for personal trips, 2,000 miles in commuting, so that's from his home to the office and back. And then the remaining 7,100 miles were for purely business trips. Now, John's business use for the vehicle is 60.17%. How do we get that number? You take the business miles, 7,100, divided by the total miles on the odometer of 11,800. That's how you get business use. So in this example, John meets that 50% threshold because he used it more than 50% for business, so he, he can take the bonus depreciation deduction. Now again, what we'll see on the form is the bonus depreciation deduction is limited. It's not gonna be 100% of what he paid for it. And that's because he still used the vehicle 40% for non-business use. Now let's look at example two where you can't get any bonus depreciation. So we have the same company here. Uh, purchases a 2020 Lexus GX460 for 56K in cash on March 1, 2020. This is the vehicle that's being used by Jane. So we have John and Jane, they are each 50% shareholders. During the 2020 uh, calendar year, odometer shows that the vehicle is driven 10,000 miles by Jane. Now when we look at her mileage books, she drove the vehicle 3,500 miles for personal trips, 2,500 miles in, in commuting, and then the remaining 4,000 were for business trips. Jane's business use under this standard is 40%, right? We have her 4,000 business miles divided by 10,000 total miles driven, okay? So in this fact pattern, Jane has not met the standard. She used the vehicle mostly for personal and commuting mileage, so she did not have at least 50% business use. Now, what does that mean? Well, Jane is ineligible for the bonus depreciation deduction, 
But because the business still owns the vehicle, it's still used for business purposes, she can still take a depreciation deduction, but she's not gonna get that bonus depreciation, okay? So, so here's the two fact patterns. Let's look at the tax return and the relevant forms. And uh, like I said, we'll flip back and forth where necessary. So here we have an S-Corp return for 2020. Here's our S-Corp, Fake Consulting Business LLC. Uh, the company has some revenue and expenses. Um, this is pretty much standard, right? You're, you're, nothing will be different there and the way these schedules are completed. The real key that we're looking at here, so there's our Schedule L, our balance sheet for the year. We can see that uh, the vehicles are in there on lines 10A. Right, those are the purchase price of the vehicles, or the cost basis rather, and the amount of depreciation we took for the year. Uh, but what we're really interested in is the 4562. So there's the K1 for each uh, shareholder. Here's where it gets interesting. So 4562, this is our depreciation and amortization schedule. Um, in page two here for the listed property, this is where we're gonna start entering information on the vehicles. So part five, listed property, this is page two of the 4562. Um, so I'm gonna go through these sections and then we'll go back up to the, the top here uh, and show kind of how these numbers are computed. So uh, 24A and B, answer these questions. Do you have evidence to support the business investment use? In this case, yes, because we have, um, we're documenting the mileage used on the vehicle, right? So our company policy is that we track mileage John and Jane need to do that, submit the log books. Um, and so that's how they keep track of the business use. And yes, this evidence is written. Now, if you're answering no to this, that's uh, a problem, in my opinion. As your CPA, as your tax attorney, you need to have written evidence of what you're doing because it's just like any other deduction. If the IRS ever challenges it and you don't have the information to support it, you're in trouble. Okay, so now lines 26 and 7. So 26, this is property used more than 50% in qualified business use, right? So this is our going to be this is going to be our Toyota 4Runner, right? Because we met the 50% standard. Then lines 27 is for property that's being used 50% or less, right? And so that's our Lexus, right? Jane's Lexus didn't meet that standard. Now the other piece down here, which is really important, section B. This is where you complete information on the use of the vehicle if it's being used by somebody that owns the company. So if a more than 5% owner is using the vehicle, you need to complete these sections. And this is where we, where we would determine you, percentage uh, business and personal use of the vehicle. So you've gotta fill these out, right? So vehicle one for the forerunner, right? We had 7,100 business miles, 2,000 commuting, 2,700 personal, and then total, add them all up, we've got 11,800. And again, the 7,100 divided by 11,800, that business use of 60.17%, that's right here, right? That's how we get our column C number. Same computation for uh, vehicle two and column B, 4,000 business, 2,500 commuting, 3,500 personal, 10,000 total miles driven. So 4,000 divided by 10, 40% business use, okay? Very, very important to complete these if you're an owner and you're using that vehicle. And in most cases, this is what's going on, right? I mean, all these videos are targeting entrepreneurs and telling them to buy vehicles. You're gonna have to fill this section out and this is how we're computing the business use. Then in questions 34 through 36, obviously you answer these are quite simply yes or no. Um, in this case, John and Jane don't have any other cars, right? So the vehicle is available for personal use off duty. Um, it's being used by a greater than 5% owner and it, another vehicle is being available for personal use, no, right? We're, we're saying that John and Jane don't have any other vehicles, right? So it's a yes, yes, no in this case. Now here's where the computation um, dictates what the deduction is. So we have our business use, date, place, and service, and then the cost, right? So remember, we purchased the 4Runner for 62000 We purchased the Lexus for 56000 So how do we compute our actual deduction? Well, because this is greater than 50% for business use, we, can, we are eligible for the bonus depreciation, right? Which is capped at 100% of the cost. But it has to be reduced based on whatever percentage business use you have. So here we have $62,000, 
and the bonus depreciation deduction is going to be limited to 60.17% of the 62k. That's how we get our depreciation deduction here, 37,305. So if I pull up my calculator here and we do 62,000, right, times point oh, sorry, point 0.6017 37,305, that's how we get our depreciation deduction. Again, it's not 100%. You cannot deduct 100% of the vehicle if there's any personal use, right? So if you wanna take the position that it's 100% business use, you better have the support for it. If the IRS ever looks at this and they find out that, well, okay, but we can see that you're driving it around on the weekend. You're not working on the weekend. You're, you're taking your family to different places. That's personal use. You can't deduct that, right? You can only deduct business use in connection with your trader business. Now, what about property down here in line 27? Well, the same principle applies, right? The cost of the property was 56,000, but I'm only using it 40% for business. So my basis for depreciation is going to be only the business use. So in this case, for Jane, her vehicle, again, she doesn't get bonus depreciation. She has a $56,000 vehicle, but it has 40% business use. Her basis for depreciation is $22,400. And so that is the amount that's depreciated over the straight line method, five-year recovery period. Okay, so that's how we arrive at the $2,240. So, you know, for Jane's vehicle, again, the, the kicker here is you got to use it at least, you know, well, you got to use it more than 50% in order to qualify for this bonus appreciation. But even if you do, it's still capped based on business use. And then in the case where you use it 50% or less for business, um, you get no bonus. You can still deduct some depreciation, but your depreciable basis is limited to the portion that's attributed to business use, not personal. Okay, so that's how we get our depreciation deduction for the year. So the 37,305 plus the 2240, uh, the 39,545, that's the total depreciation deduction for the year. So if we flip up here to our page one of Form 1120S, we can see here, there's our depreciation deduction, right? 39,545. So that's the write off, right? Again, you're not writing off the whole thing. You can't write off the whole thing unless you meet all those rigid standards, right? And then always keep in mind what is the business use of the vehicle, right? If it's not 100%, uh, there's going to be limitations. So uh, I hope that was helpful. Um, I hope that helped clarify and dispel, you know, some of these myths and all this nonsense that you see out there on the internet. Um, if you have any additional questions, please leave me a comment below. Happy to answer any questions I can. And uh, of course, I always look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you.